Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, from wherever you're joining us, and welcome to today's Low Flow Anesthesia virtual demo. Before I welcome Frederick to the floor, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping notes to help you all get the most out of your experience today. First, take a look at the interactivity panel at the right of your screen with four tabs, chat, Q&A, polls, and handouts. We want this to be an interactive experience for you, so please send your questions, thoughts, and comments using that Q&A tab, and we'll try to address as many of your questions as we can at the end of the demo today. When a question is added in that Q&A panel, you can upvote that question to increase its position on my list by clicking the thumbs up button underneath it. This is always helpful so I know which questions to address first. You can also explore some links and documents in the handouts tab to learn more. And lastly, if you're having any technical issues during the demo, please try to refresh your browser first and ensure that you're using Google Chrome to access this event as it is the most stable browser. If you're still having trouble after you refresh, you can use the private chat function to communicate with me by sending a chat to chat to me, Sydney, and I can help to troubleshoot. And now I'm pleased to welcome Frederick to the floor. <laughs> Thank take, you. <laughs> welcome, take it away. Sounds good. Hello, um, hello everybody. My name is Frederick and I am a sales regional sales and support representative for Kent Scientific based in San Diego. Uh, first off, thank you for taking the time to hang out with me during this webinar and giving me the opportunity to speak to you. I'm um, a huge thank you also to Sydney and Sarah from Insight Scientific for all their help in putting together this webinar and making everything run as smoothly as possible. There we go. Today, I will be speaking to you about the SomnoSuite and SomnoFlow systems, which are the low flow electronic vaporizer anesthesia systems from Kent Scientific. Although they are two different systems with their own unique features and benefits, both use innovative technology to provide anesthesia precisely and safely. Both the SomnoSuite and SomnoFlow low flow electronic vaporizer systems provide advantages over traditional high flow vaporizers. Anesthetic concentration and flow rate delivery is based on the animal's weight. Traditional canister style vaporizers contain wicks, dials, and other moving parts that need to be calibrated or recertified to maintain accuracy. Both the SomnoSuite and SomnoFlow use solid state electronics to ensure accuracy and do not require annual recertification. This precise delivery ensures both animal and user safety. Another benefit of these systems is that they allow you to use either compressed or ambient air as your carrier gas. This is a great feature to have, especially if your procedures do not require, um, uh, do not require oxygen, uh, you lack the space need, needed for gas tanks, or you just get tired of people stealing your gas tanks and leaving them empty on you. <laughs> What is the Somno Suite? The Somno Suite is a compact low flow anesthesia system that uses a precision pump to deliver precise amounts of anesthesia. Measuring 11 inches length by 8 inches deep and 3 inches high and weighing about 4 pounds, the system is light and portable, allowing you to set it up on a bench top or in a hood. As mentioned previously, the electronic the integrated electronic vaporizer can use either ambient air or compressed gas to deliver anesthesia based on the animal's weight. Because of the low flow rate of the system, you can save on the amount of anesthetic and compressed gas used over time. Since small amounts of anesthetic is being used, waste gas exposure is reduced for the users. All Somno Suites are equipped with the right temp module, which is a temperature monitoring and homeothermic control that uses far infrared warming. But you can outfit your Somno Suite with additional physiological modules depending on your needs. And I'll mention more, or I'll talk about this more soon. The Somno Suite has an intuitive touchscreen control both the flow rate and anesthesia percentage are displayed in large numbers. Along the top are tabs for the additional modules that can be added to your Somno Suite. The remove button is used when you need to fill your syringe. 
Um, the glass syringe itself is filled with the anesthetics such as isoflurane. The prime button is used for preparing the pusher block to deliver the anesthesia. When you are ready to anesthetize your animal, you will touch the deliver button to deliver the anesthesia plus either the nose cone or induction buttons to turn on the flow. Because the nose cone, bo or sorry, both the nose cone and induction buttons can be preset in the setup tab. Then when you are ready to move, to remove the animal from the induction chamber, the flush button will add a layer of air with no anesthesia to reduce waste gas exposure to the user. So I've been hinting at it the past few, past few slides and you're probably thinking, but Frederick, what are the other modules that we can add to the Somno Suite? Um, well, here they are. Uh, the right temp module is for homeothermic warming and it is included with the Somno Suite at no additional cost. The mouse stat module for, is used for heart rate and pulse oximetry. The rovent module is for ventilation and the CAPNOSCAN module is used for end tidal CO2 monitoring. So depending on your needs, you can add as many or as little of these modules as you want, making the Somno Suite a pretty nifty all-in-one tool for you. So now I will play you a quick video about the Somno Suite. So let me go ahead and switch that over. And Einstein Scientific's low-flow electronic vaporizers offer numerous benefits compared to traditional vaporizer systems. Both the SomnoFlow and SomnoSuite systems offer high precision, increased safety for personnel and animals, and significant annual cost savings. With an electronic touchscreen interface, both systems allow precise control of anesthetic output to a tenth of a percent. Traditional vaporizers rely on passive vaporization of anesthetics and require minimum flow rates and annual calibration services to maintain their accuracy. The SomnoSuite and SomnoFlow systems are programmed with a gram to mole conversion of liquid anesthetic. The system automatically determines the volume of anesthetic required to reach the desired concentration in the carrier gas stream. Because anesthetic delivery is mathematically driven and there are no wicks or gaskets to service, no annual calibration or certifications are required. Both of our Somno low-flow electronic vaporizers can be connected to a compressed gas source, but neither require the use of compressed gas to deliver inhalant anesthetics. Their included internal pump draws in ambient air, giving users the option to anesthetize animals in settings where gas tanks are not available or not feasible to use. The SomnoSuite is designed as an all-in-one modular surgical solution and can be programmed with integrated warming, pulse oximeter, ventilator, and capnography capabilities. This eliminates the need for multiple controllers and separate computers in the surgical suite. This protocol highlights best uses for an all-inclusive anesthesia and physiological monitoring suite that includes a low-flow electronic vaporizer, an integrated ventilator, a pulse oximeter, and a far-infrared warming pad. Kent Scientific's Somno electronic vaporizers have several advantages over traditional anesthesia systems, including an integrated internal pump, increased precision, less waste gas, and no annual maintenance requirements. For more information about the SomnoFlow and SomnoSuite systems, please contact your local Kent Scientific representative. All right, excellent. Okay, so now I will take you through some various Somno Suite system setups. Um, the diagram displays a typical setup with an induction chamber and a face mask using a two accessory adapter. The anesthesia outlet marked in blue um, is our inspiratory line. The line comes from the vaporizer block and splits into two branches, each leading to either the induction chamber or the face mask. Leading out from the induction chamber and the mask is the expiratory line and marked in red. This line passively carries waste gases to the WAG canister. If you choose to connect your Somno Suite to compressed gas, the incoming pressure from the compressed gas tank must not be higher than 15 PSI in order for the Somno Suite to work properly. In the smaller diagram to the right, a preset pressure reducer is connected between the compressed gas tank and the Somno Suite to bring the pressure down to 15 PSI. If you do choose to use compressed gas, 
we are more than happy to discuss. Uh, we are more than happy to discuss your setup with you. And this diagram shows how a three accessory adapter can be used to it to connect the Somno Suite to one induction chamber and two face masks, giving you an additional station to work from. Um, if your studies or procedures use a light, utilize a ventilator, this diagram shows how you can connect the Somno Suite to a standalone ventilator, such as our Rovent system. If you are performing stereotaxic surgeries, the Somno Suite can also interface with your stereotaxic frames using the two accessory adapter as well. All right, so now we're going to move on to the Somno Flow. So the Somno Flow from Kent Scientific, again, is a compact standalone anesthesia delivery system that utilizes either ambient air or compressed gas as the carrier for the anesthesia. This system measures six inches length by six inches wide and nine inches high and weighs around five pounds. This makes it easy to transport and set up anywhere such as the bench top or in a hood. The Somno Flow sources the anesthesia directly from the bottle and primes automatically, allowing you to start your procedures soon after powering on the system. As you can see in the diagram there, we have a little holder for your um, isoflooring bottle that connects to the, to the Somno Flow system. So like the Somno Suite, the Somno Flow gives you the choice to use either ambient air or compressed gas as your carrier for the anesthesia. The Somno Flow achieves a flow rate as low as 100 mils per minute, matching closer to the minute volume of a mouse compared to traditional vaporizers. This leads to less waste gas exposure and increases safety to the users while decreasing the amount of anesthesia and waste gas filters used over time. The Somno Flow does not rely on the WIC based delivery system as seen in traditional vaporizers. And because of this, there is also no need for annual calibration or certification, cutting down on your yearly costs associated with these. Um, so now I will play you a, a video about the Somno Flow. This video will provide the instructions necessary to set up and begin using the Kent Scientific Somno Flow Low Flow Electronic Vaporizer. We'll take you through setup requirements, equipment use, and a protocol for anesthetizing an average size C57 BL6 mouse. Along the way, we'll highlight some of the features that will benefit you in your research. Setup instructions are also provided in the user's guide. To begin setting up the Somno Flow, connect the inspiratory portion of the two accessory connector to the SomnoFlow's port labeled out. Connect the inspiratory portion of the face mask tubing to one branch and the inspiratory chamber tubing to the other branch. Connect the expiratory portion of the two accessory connector to the expiratory tubing on the chamber and nose cone. If using a stereotaxic frame, select one of the included stereotaxic adapters to attach to the two accessory connectors on the ports of your stereotaxic gas anesthesia mask. Attach the charcoal canister using the charcoal canister tubing. The SomnoFlow can deliver anesthesia without the need for compressed gas. If you're using ambient air from the system's internal pump, leave the air inlet open. If you wish to use a compressed gas source, use the compressed gas assembly to connect a pressure-regulated gas source to the SomnoFlow's compressed gas port. The inlet pressure should not exceed 15 PSI. Connect the included bottle top adapter to a bottle of anesthetic. Connect the delivery tubing to the bottle top adapter and place the anesthetic bottle into the holder. Turn on the SomnoFlow to begin the automatic priming sequence. 
The system will draw anesthetic directly from the bottle and prepare the system for delivery. Once priming is complete, touch Menu to enter the preset settings. There are three presets available to save your preferred settings. Low flow is best used for anesthetic maintenance, high flow is best used for induction, and purge is best used to reduce excess anesthetic in the induction chamber. The Somno flow will save all of your settings, but you can return to this menu at any time to adjust the preset options. Even though you have entered flow rates and anesthetic concentrations for each phase, you can still adjust these parameters during anesthesia delivery from the run screen. Now that your tubing is set up and settings are saved, you're ready to begin anesthetizing an animal. Adjust the clips to direct airflow to the induction chamber. Place the animal in the induction chamber and touch high flow. The Somno flow will begin delivery at the settings you've selected in your high flow presets. Use the dials to make adjustments to the flow rate or anesthetic concentration as needed. When the animal is fully anesthetized, touch high flow again to stop delivery. If desired, purge the chamber using the purge feature. Remove the animal from the chamber and position on the nose cone. Be sure to adjust the clips to direct the airflow to the nose cone. Touch low flow to resume anesthetic delivery. When you're finished with the procedure, touch low flow again to stop delivery and recover the animal. When you're finished using the system for the day, touch menu, anesthetic control, and empty to empty the anesthetic from the Somno flow. Once complete, you may remove the anesthetic bottle from the system. Remove the bottle top adapter and replace the manufacturer's cap onto the anesthetic bottle. All right, so hope you enjoyed that video. And now we'll go through uh, various SomnoFlow system setups. Um, this diagram insert displays a typical setup with an induction chamber and a face mask using the two accessory adapter. Um, the anesthesia outlet marked in blue is the inspiratory line. This line comes from the SomnoFlow and splits into two branches, either leading to the induction chamber or the face mask. Leading out from the induction chamber and the mask is the expiratory line and marked in red. This line passively carries waste gases to the, to the WAG canister. If you choose to connect your SomnoFlow to compressed gases, the incompre incoming pressure from the compressed gas tank, again, must not be higher than 15 PSI in order for the SomnoFlow to work properly. In a small diagram, a preset pressure reducer is connected between the compressed gas tank and the Somno flow to bring the pressure down to 15 PSI. If you do choose to use compressed gas, again, we are more than happy to discuss your setup with you. This diagram shows how a three accessory adapter can be used to connect the Somno flow to one induction chamber and two face masks, giving you an additional station to work from. For studies and procedures use a lot utilizing a ventilator, this diagram shows how you can, can connect the SomnoFlow to a standalone ventilator system, such as our Rovent system. And if you are performing stereotaxic surgeries, the SomnoFlow can also interface with your stereotaxic frames using a two accessory adapter. Uh, this was mentioned in the presentation, but when you purchase the SomnoFlow and SomnoSuite, you, um, you receive adapters for the stereotaxic frames. So throughout this presentation, you have seen the features and the benefits of our low-flow anesthesia systems. They are simple to use and are able to deliver precise amounts of anesthesia. The safety benefit of the Somno Suite and Somno Flow come from the small amounts of anesthetic use. Using less anesthetic produces less waste gas, anesthet less waste anesthetic gases, leading to greater safety to both your animals and operators. And that is it.
Um, before we go into the question, the Q&A portion, um, I wanted to put up my uh, contact info. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I also want to quickly mention that we do have some promotions going on right now. Um, we have promotions going on for our small animal warming systems and heating pads, as well as our Mousestat Junior, which is the pulse oximeter and heart rate monitor. So if you head to our website at www.kentscientific.com, you can look up those systems and um, check out the promotions that we have going on. And there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Frederick. That was a fantastic demo. Um, I am going to let you catch your breath for a moment <laughs> while I run some polls before our Q&A. So I'll bring you back in just a moment. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining today. Just a reminder um, before I jump into these polls that the Q&A tab is how you can submit your questions, um, and we will be addressing those momentarily. So the first poll we have here. What physiological parameters do you currently monitor during your surgeries? So please um, select all the options that pertain to your research, whether it is a heart rate B, pulse, oxym pulse oximetry, C, blood pressure, D, ECG, E, temperature, or F, N, tidal CO2. So we appreciate all the responses that you guys will provide for us today. And also while you're answering, I wanted to draw your attention to the handouts tab again. There are some great resources in there to help you learn more about the systems that Frederick presented today. Okay, and our next poll that I'm going to launch, which anesthetic do you usually use? So the options for these are isoflurane, sevoflurane, or injectable. And if you missed any of these polls, they can be found in the polls tab. So you can pop in there and quickly answer. We appreciate your responses and your time uh, participating in these polls for us. Fantastic. All right, and for the final poll for today, um, do you regularly find the need to provide supplemental oxygen during your surgeries? So your options for this one are always, sometimes, or rarely. So thank you again for participating in those. Um, as I mentioned just a second ago, if you did miss any of those, you can pop into the polls tab and um, submit your answers in there. Okay, and lastly, if you have to leave early, I did want to pop up a link for you all. So if you do have to leave early, um, we would appreciate your time to participate in the, our post-demo survey. Um, so if you could provide any feedback before you go, we really appreciate your insights. All right, and without further delay, let's kick off our Q&A session. Hi, Frederick, welcome back. Hello. <laughs> um, I also wanted to mention that I will put Frederick's uh, contact information in just a moment on the screen. Um, so if you do want to contact him, you will be able to do so. Okay, first question, Frederick. Mm -hmm. Is there any cons to using room air versus pure O2 from a tank? Okay, uh, let me just repeat that one more time. Is there any cons to using room air versus pure O2 from a tank? Uh, oh, Matthew Lopez. Hello, Matthew. Nice to meet you, and thank you for your question. Um, so there aren't really necessary. It just kind of depends on your own specific pr procedures and what your institution um, uh it allows. Um, we have a lot of customers who switch to the Somno floor, or the Somno suite from a traditional style because they like the nice compact portability of it. And they felt that switching from pure O2 to room air um, wasn't, um, did not affect their studies at all. Um, of course, if you're doing studies that last for, you know, longer than a couple of hours and you notice that, um, your SpO2 levels are dropping, then of course, having that extra O2 um, from the tank 
to supplement um, the oxygen levels in the blood um, will be better for your studies. So again, it just kind of depends on what your studies require, what you're comfortable with working with and whatnot. So. Fantastic. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay, our next question from Elise. Can I use SomnoSuite with oxygen concentrators? Uh, okay, uh, SomnoSuite with oxygen concentrators. Hello, Elise. Nice to meet you, and thank you for your question. Um, yes, you can use uh, the oxygen concentrators with the SomnoSuite or the SomnoFlow. Um, it does require a little bit of extra tubing um, connection to, uh, to connect the two. Um, basically, it's just tubing that connects, but we also have um, kind of like a third branch that will branch off to kind of take off any excess pressure that will um, vent it out to the um, to the environment. Um, so if you would like any pictures or diagrams about how that looks, um, feel free to contact me and I will be able to send you that information. Fantastic, thanks so mm -hmm. much. Um, okay, we are going to move to Alexandra's question. Can other mouse ventilators be used with the Somno Suite? Gotcha. Um, other mouse ventilators with any vent from Harvard. All right, cool. Hello, Alexandra. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, so yes, other mouse ventilators can be used with a Somno Suite. Um, I personally am not familiar with the mini vent from Harvard Apparatus, um, but what we can do, what you can do also is um, go to our website um, along the top right, there's a button for resources and it will take you, um, click on that button and look for the user manual. And you can um, pull up the user guide for the Somno Suite and look at the connections on how that can um, interact with, or how can that connect to your minivan. Um, so again, um, I can also reach out to my colleagues to see if they have any familiarity with using the minivan with the Somno Suite. But as far as I'm concerned, it should be totally fine to use. Okay. Thank you so much. That's yeah. helpful. Um, Cindy has asked, can the Somno Flow be used with rats? Ah, yes. Hello, Cindy. Nice to meet you. Um, yes, the Somno Flow and the Somno Suite can be used with rats. Um, so we sell uh, starter kits, um, which include induction chambers, face masks, um, uh, extra wag canisters, as well as an, an additional three way, three accessory adapter. Um, they, the face mask and the induction chambers come in various sizes that can be used for animals as small as mice up to rats as well. So if you go to our website and, um, you know, type in face mask or type in induction chamber, um, you could pull up those product pages and it will show you the exact measurements of the face mask and um, the induction chambers. Okay, thank you very mm -hmm. much. And somebody else did have that question too. So um, hopefully we answered both of theirs. Gotcha. <laughs> um, Nashua asks, do you need to know the weight of the mouse before you put it into the induction chamber? Gotcha. Okay, uh, let's see. Do you need to know the weight of the mouse before you put it into the induction chamber box? Hello, Nashua. Thank you for your question. So um, it is kind of nice to know the weight of the uh, mouse before you place it into the induction chamber. With the Somno Suite, when you turn on the system, um, it will pop up with uh, some words, and it will say, oh, please enter in the mouse weight. And basically, when you're doing that, it's telling the computer inside to basically um, calculate how much um, isofluorine that it will um, vaporize based on the animal's weight. Um, so what's great about that, again, it, because it's based on the animal's weight, you're matching closer to the minute volume of the animal, and that's where the real savings of, um, you know, how much isofluorine you use over time comes in. Um, but if you don't know the animal's weight, you could also just kind of put in an approximation and um, and that'll be fine. And then again, as you're using the Somno Suite and Somno Flow, you're monitoring your animal to making sure to make sure that they are properly anesthetized. And as the system is running, you could adjust your flow rate and um, percentage as needed to make sure that your animals stay anesthetized. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that answered their question. Um, okay, we have a question from Katina. I'm going to kind of paraphrase it. Uh, they are wondering whether, um, if you can give some, some recommendations or tips on how to properly use the induction chamber and nose cone simultaneously, ah. um, you know, in order to keep the mouse down in the chamber while also having a mouse on a nose cone. So I don't know if you can mention any tips for that, keep 
you yeah. know, with the flow rate and things like that. <laughs> yes. Hello, Katina. Thank you for your question. So I'm actually going to flip back a couple of slides. Um, I think here we go. Yeah, perfect. So in this diagram here, um, you see that we have using the blue, or sorry, following the blue lines, the inspiratory line, we have this uh, set up with the three accessory connectors. So here we have it connecting to one induction chamber and two face masks. Likewise, if you would like to do two induction chambers and one nose cone, that is totally fine. Um, you would just need to replace uh, the connections instead of a face mask. You just add in another induction chamber as uh, to that line as well. So pretty much um, whatever configuration you need, um, as long as you have the connectors to it, you should be fine. Um, you will just need to adjust your flow rates accordingly just to make sure that all the chambers get flooded with the anesthesia. So. Hopefully right. that one. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That was You're great. Um, okay, let me just see what the next question is. Bear with me a moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think you might have, oh, here we go. Um, oh no, sorry, we asked that one already. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you somewhat addressed it, but um, their question was also about having two um, two mice and the chamber going at once, um, whether you can kind of expand on that. Um, oh, sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Yes, sorry. Yep. <laughs> um, oh, I was on the wrong place. Yeah, can you use two induction chambers and then one nose cone at the same time? I believe the image here is showing two mice oh. um, on nose cones, but can you do two induction chambers? Yes, yes, you can add two, you can, instead of two masks, two chambers, you could do two chambers, one face mask. Um, I think I've even seen a lab where they've just done all induction chambers for whatever for whatever procedures they were working on. So um, any combination of that uh, configuration is possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic, thanks. Um, Let's see, let's move on to this next question here. Is there a specific syringe for the Somno Suite or can you use any type of syringe in all sizes? Uh, for example, Chantel has mentioned that they have a five milliliter syringe, um, but it doesn't seem to fit in the mm -hmm. Somno Suite. Got it. Hello, Chantel. Thank you for your question. So yes, um, there is a specific syringe for the Somno Suite. Um, we do have them online. Um, they are available in uh, 10 mil and 5 mil sizes. And basically, these syringes were made specifically for the Somno Suite. And so that way, when the rates are entered in and um, the pusher block is pushing, they are calibrated specifically to those glass syringes. So, um, you know, if you do need extras or whatnot, please uh, check out our website to um, see which ones you need and um, go ahead and purchase them. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks. Um, I am going to yeah pop your contact info back up there mm -hmm. um, so they can either head to the website, like you said, or reach out to you directly about that. Um, okay, we have a few more great questions. Um, keep them coming, everyone. <laughs> uh, Marvin is asking, after taking the body weight of the animal, where does the body weight get entered into the system? Okay. Yep. So hello, Marvin. Thank you for your question. Um, so with the Somma Suite, again, as you turn it on, it will give you the opportunity to enter in the body weight right at the start screen as it's um, kind of like turning it on, booting up. Um, if you don't do it there, you could also just go into the setup menu function of the Somnus Suite to um, adjust the body weight as necessary. Um, and then with, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, great. Let's see. Um, can you give some advantages to using the Somno Flow over you know, why would you choose Somno Flow over Somno Suite and maybe vice versa? Gotcha. All right. Thank you for the question, Nashua. So um, some of the advantages of using Somno Flow compared to the Somno Suite and vice versa. Okay. So with the Somno Flow, the Somno Flow only does um, anesthesia. So that's its main function is just to do the anesthesia. Um, what some customers end up choosing the Somno Suite over the Somno Flow is that, you know, Besides um, using the anesthesia on the Somno Suite, it comes with the um, the far infrared warming uh, 
far infrared animal warming system that's already included into the Somno Suite. So that's kind of a nice bonus that you get when you purchase the Somno Suite. Um, if you end up doing any sort of like physiological monitoring, such as SpO2 monitoring, entitled CO2 monitoring, or even ventilation, those are additional modules that you can add to the Somno Suite. And that kind of makes the Somno Suite um, what it, it makes the Somno Suite kind of a nice addition to have over the Somno Flow because you have the possibility of adding all those modules into this one simple system. So, Great response. Thank you. Yep. Um, Mike has asked, at the minimum flow rate, 50 milliliters per minute, the approximate body weight is listed as 39 grams. Is this okay to use with mice that are lighter than that? Yep. At the minimum, sorry, at the minimum flow rate, 50 mils per minute, the approximate body weight is listed as 35 grams. Is this okay to use with mice that are lighter than that? Hello, Mike. Uh, thank you for your question. Nice to meet you. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh, uh oh, I lost the question. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you scroll back up to the top, you can see it. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and I'm getting there. Bam. All right. Thank you. Um, is this okay to use with mice that are lighter than that? Yes, that is correct. So you are able to use um, mice that are lighter than 39 grams. Um, with the calculations that the SomnoFlow and SomnoSuite is performing, you know, these are based on the body weight and these are like suggestions. So while you're using the systems, you should always be monitoring your animals to making sure that they're at the proper anesthetic depth and at anesthetic level. So um, yeah, you should be fine to use, you should be definitely fine to use with mice that are lighter than that. So. Perfect. Yep. Thanks. Um... Megan has a good question about leaks. So what, what sort of troubleshooting is required to ensure that your lines don't get leaks? Gotcha. Any sort of troubling is required to ensure that the lines don't have any leaks. Hello, Megan. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for your question. Um, what kinds of lines to make sure that don't have any leaks? All right. So um, probably some of the bigger or some of the few um, questions and more troubleshooting things that we have, um, you know, is definitely kind of like as you're using the system, um, every now and then just check to make sure that all of your connections are um, are connected <laughs> well. Um, so when you have your lines coming in and out of the, the, the Somno system, making sure that your lines are connected properly. Um, you don't want to over tighten anything that requires any like sort of uh, ringing because we don't want to break those um, plastic parts um, sooner than later. Um, other than that, as long as you notice that your animals are staying down um, when you're anesthetizing them, you should be fine. If you do notice them waking up, you know, again, check your connections and then do reach out to um, to us to see what other uh, troubleshooting issues we can try and figure out with your setup. So, Perfect. Thank you. Um, let's see. With our next question, um, Dr. Ahmed has asked if there is an inbuilt gauge, such as an anal thermometer, to monitor body temperature while the animal is under anesthesia. Mm -hmm. um, hello, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you for your question. Um, so, with the Somno Suite, it does have it does come with the far infrared war animal warming system, um, the right temperature meter. Um, it comes with two different temperature probes. One that you will place onto your um, onto the warming pad. And then the second probe will be inserted into the animal rectally. And what's nice about the right temp um, junior, right temp module is that um, you can set, say you want your animal to be maintained at 37 degrees. As long as you have those probes in place, the system will automatically monitor to make sure that the animal is um, at the temp that you set it at. Fantastic, thanks. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple more questions, um, okay. and I think we still have some time. So uh, let's address Katina's next question. Um, are there different sizes for the nose cones for mice? Um, and can you show the direction of the nose cone on the mouse's nose? Okay, so yes. Hello, Katina. Um, yeah, there are different sizes for the nose cones. Um, we do have several sizes for the mouse and rats. Um, I don't think I have a very good up-close picture in these slides, but... When you go to our website and you type in um, the face mask into the search bar, it will pull up the um, face masks and you'll notice that, oh, let me, actually, I'm trying to do it right now. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. Um, you'll notice um, 
yeah, so we have four different sizes that are available for you to purchase. Um, when you go to the website, it shows you the measurement of how long the face mask is. And what you'll see is you'll kind of see like, like a longer portion um, of the face mask. That longer portion goes underneath the chin of the animal. Um, if you turn it over, it will start like jamming into the eyeballs and that's not really nice for them. So you just want to make it sure that the longer portion is underneath and resting underneath their chin. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sort of like a chin rest. <laughs> <laughs> and what's nice about our, um, our anesthesia mask too is that they're again low profile and they're made in house and they fit snugly over um, the kind of the mouth and nose of the animal so that way you don't have as much leakage coming out so they fit the nozzle of that of the animal really nicely yeah i was going to actually say that um, i've seen <laughs> them before so <laughs> that's great um nashua has another question mm -hmm. She says, thank you, Frederick. Um, can you add modules to a, at a later date to the same Somno suite that was purchased earlier? Correct. Um, yes. Hello, Nashua, and thank you. Um, so yes, you can add modules at a later date to the same Somno suite. Um, basically, what's going to happen is when you decide which uh, module you'd like to, um, to add on, um, you, we will generate a quote for you. And then what we'll have to do is coordinate a time for you to send your Somno suite back to our headquarters in Connecticut. They'll do the installation and then send it back to you. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Seems straightforward. Yep. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> um, Chantel's asked, when you have two or three mice, how would you account for the weight difference between these mice? Okay, Chantel, let's see. When you have two or three mice, how do you account for the weight difference between these mice? Um, so again, you'll just kind of have to monitor your mice as closely as possible to make sure that the appropriate um, percent ISO and uh, flow rate is being administered to them. Um, and then, sorry, I'm like mind braining right now. Uh, <laughs> I count for the weight difference between these mice. Yeah, so as long as you kind of, um, what you could do is kind of just take a, a mental average of what you have for the weight of the mice and give that approximate um, flow rate and percent ISO um, to make sure that they're anesthetized. Again, as you're using the system and you're working with these mice, you should be closely monitoring them to making sure that they have the right um, amount of ISO um, flow rate to maintain their plane of anesthesia. So hopefully that answered it. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Okay. Uh, all right. Great question here again from Dr. Ahmed. Can we set up an alarm if the vitals of the animal are going off range? So do you have, you know, limits and things that you can enter to, to monitor yeah. this? You know what? I will have to get back to you with that one on, uh, we'll get back to you on that, Dr. Ahmed, about the vitals or about the alarm of the vitals. I do know we do have, I know we do have the capabilities to set up some alarms, but I want to make sure that the vitals um, through the SPO2 Capno scan and whatnot, that we can set those up. So I will make note of that and uh, reach out to you as well. Um, and also, Dr. Ahmed, if you can email me that question as well, just so I know I can address it um, after the presentation is over. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's see. I think I think that is all that we will have time for. Let me just do a quick scan. Oh, can I add one more thing real quick? Yeah, please do. Yeah. Um, so I uh, got messaged um, from one of my colleagues um, that the mini vent and the Somnus suite do work together. So we do have customers that utilize um, the mini vent uh, from Harvard Apparatus with the Somnus suite. So I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Um, all right. Yeah, I think that we addressed as many as we could in the time that we have. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much, Frederick, for your time today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasure to have you with us as always, and I hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> always. <laughs> Great. All right. I also wanted to thank our live audience. We know you have busy schedules, so we do really appreciate you being here live and hope that you enjoyed your experience today. Um, if you do have more questions, uh, Frederick's email is up on the screen. Feel free to reach out directly to him. Before you go, I do want to mention a few exciting things from Kent Scientific. First, we have a very exciting opportunity for surgeons. So Kent Scientific is participating in a surgical workshop for microvascular surgery. If you're interested in honing your vascular surgical skills in rodents, you can take a look at this program on our website at the link pinned 
um, to the top of the panel on the right side of your screen. There are eight courses offered throughout the year, and they are located in Columbia University Medical Center in New York in the United States. So that would be the U.S.-based um, handout. The second is another amazing workshop opportunity for those who want to gain insight into administering injectable and inhalation anesthetics while monitoring vital physiological parameters in rats and mice. This is a two-day program and is located in the Netherlands at the Rene Remy Surgical Skills Center. You can click on that other link, the one that um, starts with Europe-based, and uh, that's pinned to the panel on the right of your screen to read more about this workshop. In closing, we hope you enjoyed this Inside Scientific virtual demo produced in partnership with Kent Scientific, and I hope that you all enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for being here with us.